Right, so what we're doing here then is we're clearing out this trench to the left-hand side. We're going to remove all the top cobbles on this, this end first, see how far down they go, and gradually work our way right back, removing all of the road to see how deep it is, see what's underneath that. And then we'll get a profile if we leave that edge on the right-hand side there. We can leave that edge and profile that as well. This is trench one. Uh, it's been fully excavated and my job is to record what we found. Drawing it onto a drawing board, we obviously can't do it full scale. So I'm drawing it to a reduced scale, which is 1 to 20. I have a um, planning frame, which is 1 metre by 1 metre and it's divided into 25 smaller squares. So by looking, placing it on the ground, looking at what is in the first small square, I can transfer that onto the drawing board. What I'm doing in drawing this is I would ignore all the clay, all the soil, I would only draw the, the stones, and therefore you've got a clear, definite picture of what's down there. In other words, we're drawing what we're interested in and leaving out what we're not interested in. Or as I joke myself, uh, anything to get out of digging, you know. So. <laughs> it's been very interesting, but it has been very hard work. I can say physically hard work. But um, we had success today where we found an unusual line of colour, which means that it could show the difference between the natural and then man-made on top, so that's been quite exciting. Slave, please. This one's grunting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just making noises. I'm sure we have silent slaves since the 2000s. It's dirty. So. <laughs> Do you remember what, what uh, context did this little bit of bone come out of? Was it the the Iron Pan 2005? It, it was. This bone's really interesting, isn't it? Because it's um, it's turning up in a number of places now, but they've uh, they've been preserved, presumably either by the contact with the iron pan or in fact being preserved by it because they've been burned at some point. And then you can just see on the other side there you can make out where the marrow is. Uh, we'll have to get someone to have a look at these pieces of bone. They're, 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 the more of them we get then the more interesting they're becoming. Brilliant, thank you Simon. So this little fragment of bone has, has come from a layer um, that's um, got lots and lots of iron pan in it. We give them a number, so we finish up with a numbering system locating each context by number so that, that means we can relate the records that I keep with the finds that we've got here the photographs we take are all related together and 2005 is the layer where most of these little bits of bone are coming from those numbers are not dates we're not writing down the potential date of a layer what we're doing is giving numbers to layers and that helps us to tie all our records together so once we've given a number to a particular layer of soil then that number goes through the whole system that number finds its way onto finds its way onto cards that go with the fines that sit in trays until they've been washed then they go into bags the numbers written on the bag the numbers written into ledgers so we're listing exactly what we've found and where and which and which layer it came from linked together by the number we have a context card that tells us all about our observations of that layer. Also, if we take photographs, we make sure that the context number is in the photograph. So these numbers are a vital part of our recording process. In fact, you could say that they're, they're the thread that ties the entire excavation together. Here in trench number one, We've been working our way down onto and then, and then investigating a layer of cobbles. It's still very difficult, as a lot of the things are on this site, to put a precise date to it. And what we do know is that at some time in a later date, a bridge is put in. And once the bridge goes in, presumably this routeway using a ford goes out of use. So whether or not underneath it you've got some natural cobbles, it's not really clear. But what's going on on the top, we're now sure of, that we've got people creating a roadway here. And that road is along the, the alignment that you would expect people to be moving and that north-south routeway coming in towards York from directly from the south. And it's very interesting trying to work out where the crossing points are. And we've added to that, we've added to the evidence for this area now 
by suggesting that we've got a roadway coming down here and that may well be the fording point that's talked about in the, during the battle in 1066.